Hey everyone, how's it going? I want to share this with you today. Uh, last night before bed, I don't know about any of y'all, but my sleep schedule is totally out of whack. Um, <laughs> but I've been up pretty late and then ended up just, just praying. And uh, the last about a week or so, um, it was one of my favorite verses uh, when I was first born, born again, uh, Psalm 23. I mean, we all, we all know it. Um, and it's such a powerful one. And last night, Last night, the Lord just revealed something to me that was just so comforting and um, so amazing, and I wanna share it with you. In Psalm 23, we usually go to verse four, which is, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. But what I got stuck on last night was verse one. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And I have been reading Genesis um, the last uh, about a week or so, and it, glory to God, just the perfect timing on all of this. And the Psalm 23 verse one, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, can, can have so many different meanings, right? So I shall not want, my soul no longer thirsts for anything else. I, I don't want anything else because I have Christ, right? I have life in him and what does, why, why don't I want anything else? What does a shepherd do for his flock, for his sheep? He cares for them, he feeds them, he waters them, he pets them and gives them love. I would hope so. <laughs> and he, he takes care of them in every single way. He teaches them where they need to go. He guides them and directs them. He corrects them when he needs to. And when one wanders off, he comes and finds it. He comes and finds that sheep that wandered off, that lost sheep. He leaves the 99 for the one every single time. So I was just meditating on that. Again, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And I'm sorry if the audio, there's a little bit of a breeze out here. Sorry if it's a little odd, but anyways. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He, I, we literally don't need anything else. I have no want other than Christ because in Christ I'm cared for, in Christ I am loved, in Christ I have peace and I am fed and I have water. I don't need to, I don't go hungry and I don't thirst. Not only physically, but my soul, my spirit is just, oh, my spirit is just full of life because he has me. And whenever I just start to wander off a little bit, he comes back and, and reigns me in. He says, knocks me on the head with his, but the staff say, no, 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 this way, please. <laughs> and I hope that just blesses, blesses some of you. It was such a wonderful revelation that just brought me so much peace and so, so many layers deep of what does a shepherd do for his sheep? Everything. And what do the sheep get to do? The sheep just get to eat, drink, hang out, love each other. <laughs> fellowship with each other I don't know like do sheep do that but I can imagine you know they're all they're all together hanging out and uh, that's what that's what we do as the body of Christ right and uh, absolutely amazing God is so good and his timing is perfect with everything you don't need to worry about anything you don't need to stress about anything we just pray and with faith we believe that we have received it and we have it we pray in the name of Jesus and the Father hears us every single time Without a doubt, without a doubt. Perfect love casts out fear. There's no need to fear in anything. Because what is there to fear? The ultimate power is, the ultimate power in this world is death, right? Which no longer has power over those who have placed their faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone. And his redemptive work on the cross, he cried out to Telestai. He said, it is finished. The debt is paid for, whole, perfect, and complete. His death, burial, and resurrection wiped the slate clean. Past, present, and future sins, once and for all. We are not co-saviors. We do not need to work out our salvation. We work out our sanctification, not our salvation. Two separate events. But anyways, what is there to fear? If, this, if Satan had the power of death, which he no longer has, if you believe in Christ, that's the ultimate, that's the ultimate thing that we fear, right? But we know that we are alive in Christ, new creations, born, born again of the Spirit, 
unto eternal life called by the Heavenly Father to be his children. We have eternal life and death no longer reigns over us. And if death is the ultimate power, ultimate power, right? In this world that Satan has, but he doesn't have it over us, then what do we have to fear? Do we have to fear the stress that we're going through? Nah, because there is life in Christ and we know our end goal. Uh, do we have to fear lack? No, because God always provides his promises rain down on us all the day long. There's nothing to fear at all. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Just, I pray peace and joy and love over each and every one of you watching this video. Father, I ask that you would just give them that supernatural peace and joy, Father, that we would worship you and praise you in every single thing that we do. Glory to you in every single thing. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. I know some translations are, uh, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. That's the one that I memorized. <sighs> but God is so good and in him is uh, everything we need. I pray that we would all understand the fullness of God, that we would be able to grasp, grasp it and understand that nothing can separate us from the love of God, that the eyes of our hearts may be enlightened, that we may know the hope to which he has called us, the riches of his inheritance in his saints. This is a, uh, this is a prayer in Ephesians that uh, y'all should go read because it is good. Paul writes a fantastic prayer in the book of Ephesians. Anyways, I know I got a little sidetracked here. I just wanted to share that with you. Um, the Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. We have every single thing we need. As a good shepherd does, he leads us, he teaches us, he provides for us, he cares for us, and he loves us. Such a perfect God that we serve. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Oof. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise break. Woo. <laughs> Glory to God. All right. I, don't, I won't drag this video on any longer. <laughs> I love each and every one of you. God bless. Take care. Again, God has got everything under control. Seek him in everything that we do. Don't try and figure things out for ourselves. Lean on him in all of our ways and he will make our paths straight. All right. Love y'all. God bless.